Uh, I'd like to first start off by thanking Teresita, the Ford Foundation, and all of the other lovely souls who have spent many hours and efforts and energies uh, making this event possible. I'd like to, like to start by saying that the quote, art imitates life, rings true. The absence of the American Latino experience in art history coincides with its very same absence in the public sphere. Television, politics, education, economics, and of course, art. The current national conversation has, in a way, forced us to reconsider the condition of the quintessential American virtue. We are all created equal. Growing up in San Antonio, Texas, meant that my first elementary school field trip was to the Alamo. <laughs> this was a powerful experience, but not in the way that my teachers had hoped. <laughs> <laughs> I had not yet been to an art museum, and it was here that I first saw, or that I saw an oil painting for the first time. My instincts were instantly drawn to the brushwork and the painting, the painstaking details. The problem was that I recognized the faces of the bad guys. They were me. And there began my long struggle to find my place in the world and to understand it through images. This is a photo of my dad in 1969. I remember talking with him about the draft, about his many classmates who had gone to Vietnam and not returned. He remembered being told, get in line, blacks and browns get infantry when asking an officer about being assigned to something he was actually gifted in, like mathematics and electronics. This image of my dad holds that history for me, and like the image of Davy Crockett at the Alamo, it radically changed my perception of the world and its rules, made me confront our struggles of the past and those I most certainly would face in my future. In my final semester at the Rhode Island School of Design in 2000, I created the painting titled Kill the Pachuco Bastard. This painting was my epiphany, and the circumstances surrounding the painting became my artistic coming of age. I painted a virtually unknown historical event, one that was tied to a youthful black subculture in places like Detroit and Harlem. The zoot suit race riots in LA of 1943 between young Mexican-American zoot suiters and several hundred American servicemen was sparked by rising racial, racial tensions, distorted views in the American press, rampant police profiling, immigrant hysteria, terrorist suspicions, and boiling patriotism. Here was a story I wanted to tell, and most importantly, it helped me to realize that the absence of history is as damaging as the distortion of it. I knew nothing about it, and neither did any of the kids I grew up with. At RISD, right after I had completed this painting, several of my professors urged me to change course immediately. And during my final critique, one professor stated that no one cared about any of these subjects and that it would be impossible for me to ever, to ever sell a single painting or ever make it in the art world if I continued. Essentially, I credit that RISD professor with fulfilling RISD's creed. It lit such a fire under my ass, and I came out more determined than ever with a clear conviction of what needed to be done. And still, often, I struggle to avoid the art world's tendency to safely, and to safely marginalize and contextualize my work into the realm of identity and culture. Inclusion should not be defined by a single exhibition during Hispanic Heritage Month. In the fall of 2013, I premiered my series, The Strangest Fruit. During my first conversation with the gallery curator, I learned that I, I was the first Mexican-American artist to show here, possibly the first Latino. After two years of traveling, this series closed at Washington and Lee University in Lexington, Virginia, a city known for its historical and controversial legacy home to the tomb of, of General Robert E. Lee and the very first hand-sewn Confederate flag, the contrast could not have been more stark. Now we face a moment of truth, a truth that urges us to tell a more accurate portrayal of all American artists in their work. Although my confrontation with a painted uh, Davy Crockett at the Alamo was not easy, it did, it did teach me to see, to face myself and time and place and to transcend it. I know the power that the arts assert in our understanding of American history, that same history we first embrace as children. At times, even the most regarded American artists around us fall into the age-old trap. 
For example, the filmmaker Ken Burns, despite his de dedication to historical truth, consistently and entirely excluded Latinos in his cinematic opus of chapters in American history. Last Friday, my latest work, The City, a project that was 11 months in the making, opened in Houston. After the opening, I kept thinking of something James Baldwin once said. It is astonishing to me the lengths that a person or a people will go in order to avoid looking into a truthful mirror. I learned that night that, fly, that five Klan members had walked into the gallery, stood and stared at the painting, and then left. The title of this painting is Key, The City. It represents something that goes much further in scope. When we expand our scope into a widescreen format, only then can we see the many factors that are at work here. The design and planning of American cities with a divide and conquer strategy such as where schools are being placed, museums, even trees, versus the placement of junkyards, jails, and public housing. This is my fictionalized selfie of 21st century America, where we are consistently drawing lines, taking sides, f and finding ourselves caught in unflinching staring contests. This landscape holds the entire 35-foot composition together. But if you don't look closely enough, it is easy to lose sight of the city, blurred and blocked by hooded figures, cell towers, and overgrown weeds. In the same manner, it is easy in real life to lose sight of and forget the landscape that ties us all together in these United States of America. Thank you.